assistant principals here at Ringgold High School. A part of my job is working with students on scheduling and registration. We want to give a great big welcome to our upcoming freshmen. And one thing that we love to do is have a parent night where we get to introduce ourselves and get to know the students and families and have an opportunity just to have conversations back and forth and be able to kind of tour our campus. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we were unable to do that at this time, but our hope is that we'll be able to do that sometime this summer so that you can get that parent night experience and to be able to tour the campus. But we'll give you some more information to come about that. It's hard to believe that we're already talking about scheduling for the 21-22 school year, but the time is here and students are going to be able to have the 8th until the 18th to complete their registration. Everything that you need to know is going to be included in what we're talking about right now. You'll be able to access this as many times as you need to through our website and you will also have all of the registration documents on the website as well. If you have questions about things that we've talked about here, you can always email or call and talk to me or one of the guidance counselors, and we will talk about those counselors here in just a few minutes. So with that, let's get started about registration. So the first thing that you need to know when building your class schedule for next year is that all high school diplomas are not created equal. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a few minutes. So one thing that you need to know about graduation is that Catoosa County requires 28 credit hours in order to graduate. So if you think that you sign up for eight classes a year for four years, that's 32 credit hours. So it's extremely important, students, that you are taking and passing every single class that you take on our campus. And that's because you have to have 28 in order to graduate. Some courses that we have require an EOC, which is an end of course exam. And if you have to take an EOC, that typically counts 20% of your grade. Now, because of COVID right now, that percentage weight is only 0.01% towards your final overall grade, but that might be back in place where it's 20% next year. We'll let you know as we, as we hear more information about that. In order to earn credit for a class, you must pass the class with a 70 or higher. If you fail a required course, you must take it again. I'm gonna say that one again because it is so important, especially for those upcoming freshmen. This might be your first experience where you have to pass a class. And so I want to make certain that you know, if you do not pass a class, you will have to repeat that class because you have to have it for graduation purposes. So the courses that are required for graduation, you will see here that you have four classes in each academic core subject. So four for English, four for math, four for science, four for social studies. Health and personal fitness is a required class for the state of Georgia and we typically do that for ninth graders. So ninth graders, as you go to log in and sign up for your classes for next year, you will notice that health and PE is already mass loaded for everybody because it's a required class. So you won't have to choose that. It's already been done for you. For those of you that have already taken the health PE credit as an eighth grader, we will go ahead and keep that class uh, as a registered class for you until we get that final grade and we get that grade added to your script transcript at the uh, end of this school year, beginning of the summer. And we'll make sure and take that then off of your class registration and um, get you added into a different class um, after that point. So again, if you've already taken it this year as an eighth grader, we cannot um, get that added to your transcript until the end of this semester once we get that final grade. Once we do, then we will give you the opportunity to choose a different class. Another class that's required for all freshmen is our From Here to Career class, and Mr. Pierce, our CTAE director, is gonna talk a little bit more about that. We also require three CTAE foreign language or fine arts classes. Two semesters of the same foreign language are required 
for a four-year college, but it's not required for graduation. So remember when I talked back at the very beginning and I said not all diplomas are created equal? Some of you know already that you want to go to a four-year college, and if that's you, then you need to make certain that you have, have either registered for or completed two foreign language classes. But for those of you that know, I'm not going to four-year college. I want to go straight into the workforce, or I want to go into an apprenticeship, or I want to go on to the military. For you, you may decide, I don't need those two foreign language classes, so you can opt out of registering for those, unless it's something that you are just interested in. You also need a one fine arts credit that is recommended, but it's not required for graduation. And then in addition to that, you will need seven electives. So these electives could be other foreign language classes, other CTAE electives, um, it could be academic electives, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what some of those options look like. So there you can see a total of 28 credit hours that are required for graduation. So our academic program options, uh, we offer courses at several different levels. We offer remedial, so those are students that are gonna need a little bit of extra help and need a little bit of extra time, foundation, and support. Because we are on block schedules, our students complete classes in a semester. So for students that might need remedial or foundation or support services um, or classes, then those students might have year-long experiences. So for many of our students, they're gonna take a year-long math class. They'll have a support class in the fall and then they'll have um, the second level of that class in the spring. We also offer college prep, we offer honors, which you might also see as gifted or accelerated. And we also offer advanced placement. And you're gonna see that when you register as AP classes. We also offer dual enrollment classes. These are college classes that you can take as a student here at Ringgold High School. Some of those classes are gonna be offered on our campus. And some classes are gonna actually be offered on GMTC or Dalton State's campus. Because of the Georgia laws that have changed, most of those classes now are going to be offered only for juniors and seniors at this point. One thing that you need to know when you're registering for your classes, if you are choosing an honors, an AP, or dual enrollment class, you do need to know that these classes are more challenging, they're more demanding, and they are accelerated classes. So you will be challenged in these classes and you will be expected to work and put in a lot of time and energy. So when you go to choose it, make sure that you remember that. Students are also able to graduate with highest honors. This is um, an accolade that has been given by Catoosa County Public Schools. It's for just, just for our district, it's not necessarily the entire state. And here's the criteria for being able to graduate with highest honors. You have to have at least 28 high school credits. You have to have a minimum of those um, of six of those at either the honors or the AP level. So that would mean I need to have taken six classes that are either honors classes or AP classes. I have to have a 90 or higher cumulative numeric GPA in HOPE core classes. So HOPE core classes being those academic core classes that you are taking. The valedictorian and salutatorian are the two students with the highest GPA and are graduating with highest honors. Students that are also interested in going to four-year colleges, you'll want to make sure that you know information about the HOPE Scholarship. HOPE Scholarship pays about 80 to 90% of tuition in a state university, or it gives you about $4,000 a year toward a private Georgia college. Here are the requirements for receiving the HOPE Scholarship. You must have a 3.0 GPA in high school core classes. So those are your English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language classes. A 3.0 means that you need to be maintaining A's, sometimes a couple of B's, and very, very rarely, maybe once, a C. But you should really be pushing yourself to be getting A's and B's in your classes if you want to keep that 3.0 GPA in order to get your HOPE scholarship. 
You need to know that failed classes do count towards your GPA. So if you fail a class and you have to repeat it, that is always going to be on your transcript. In order to receive the HOPE Scholarship or to qualify for HOPE Scholarship, you also have to take four rigor classes in high school. And as we get further on into the presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the HOPE rigor classes that we offer on our campus. One thing you do need to know is that HOPE does weight GPA for dual enrollment classes and AP courses, and they weight them by 0.5 for B's, C's, or D's. All right, so here you have a list of the academic course of study. So you can see over on the left column, you have college prep option. Or on the right, you have the advanced academics or the honors sequencing. The classes that are in red are those HOPE rigor classes that we just talked about. And if you'll remember that you need to have at least four HOPE rigor classes in order to receive the HOPE scholarship. So those classes that are in red are going to count towards that hope. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking through this because you'll have access to this document and be able to kind of spend some time looking through those. But this will help you to see the sequencing of what you should be choosing for your registration for next year. So for instance, if I know for sure that I want to take the honors route, then as a ninth grader, I need to make certain that I register for honors, ninth grade, literature, and uh, composition for my English class. For math, then I would need to make certain that I am registering for honors algebra one, or if I completed it in eighth grade, then I would need to be taking the honors geometry, and so on and so forth. You guys can get the idea. All right, academic classes. Math has actually been entered for you into your student portal. So when you go on to register, we've already done those math classes for you. And here's why. We like to get teacher recommendations, and also we like to look at your academic data in mathematics so that we can place you in what we feel like is the most appropriate and the best setting for you. We want to make sure that you're getting the most help, uh, the most support that you may need. So for some of you, that means you're going to be in a year-long math class. That's not a punishment. It is because we know that you need the extra help and the extra time. So we want to be able to provide that for you. Um, some of you, um, we know that you're a very, very capable of doing the honors classes. So we've put you into those. So that's one thing that you do not have to worry about when you go to register. Math will already be in there for you. But if you decide, I really don't feel comfortable in that class, I feel like I need to make a change, there is a waiver that a parent can sign, but again, we highly encourage you to stick with the placement that's been done for you based off of teacher recommendations and your test data. For science, English, and social studies, you're gonna be able to choose if you want a college prep route, honors, or advanced placement AP. Mr. Pierce is going to come up and talk to you a little bit about our CTAE pathways and elective options that you're going to be able to choose as a student. Specifically designed to fully equip you with all the information that Dr. Edgman has been sharing with you, in addition to some career and future information. We believe in this class and excited for your freshmen to take it. In that class, students will be given an assessment to determine their interests and aptitudes, Based on that, the freshman student will make a career plan for after high school and a graduation plan to get across that stage. In the process of that, we want each student to have a credential of value. And we're happy to offer, if you look at the screen, happy to offer several pathways, career pathways, in addition to a foreign language pathway, an ROTC pathway, and, uh, a performing arts pathway, and others. The career pathways are, of course, information technology and programming, entrepreneurship, early childhood, law enforcement, therapeutic, carpentry, business and technology, graphic design, graphic communication, audio tech, agriculture, and of course, ROTC. We want every person in our school to be fit, to fit into the right career pathway for them. 
Use science and then from here to career class, we'll give each student the tools they need to pick the correct career pathway for them or correct academic pathway. I also want to talk to you about our website. And for the sake of time, I want to direct you to that website, the RHS website. If you'll click on the Career CTAE tab, it will give a detailed list of each of these career pathways and the three classes you must take for each one. In addition to our career pathways, we offer work-based learning to juniors and seniors only. Now the first requirement, other than being a junior and senior, is you must have a job and be scheduled to work 16 hours a week. There are also assignments and requirements uh, in that class that you'll have to meet. Priority is always given to CTAE pathway completers for seniors to enter that work-based learning program. So it's important and imperative that you select a career pathway, uh, and you can do that again from your from here to career class. Now, Dr. Adrian. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. So along with our CTAE pathways, we also have options in humanities and some other elective courses. So here you can see we have art, band, chorus, musical theater. Our three foreign languages that we offer right now are German, Spanish, and French. And then we also have journalism, which is a class that um, works through our yearbook and gets to do some other journalism things. And that is um, considered an English elective. So two semesters, again, I want to remind you, two semesters of the same foreign language are required for college, but not graduation. If that's you, if you know for sure you want to go to a four-year college and you decide to take the foreign language, or you just want to take foreign languages, you have to make sure that you take those within the same year. So your level one foreign languages will be in the fall, and then your level two will be in the spring. A fine arts credit is recommended, but not required. We also have elective options in physical education. Again, that health and personal fitness class is a required class for graduation for all state of Georgia students. Freshmen will take that class and it's already been um, entered into your portal, so you won't have to worry about registering for that as a ninth grader. But we also have weight training that's an option as an elective. Now, for those of you that decide to take weight training, you need to know that this is physically rigorous course. This class is recommended for student athletes. Um, you also have several of our head coaches, for instance, baseball and football, that expect their student athletes to be in weight training. For someone like me, who is not athletic whatsoever, I would not be successful in weight training, so I would opt out of this one. But if I still enjoy doing something physical, but I'm not really great at doing the very rigorous weight training experience, then team sports would be a good option for you. And in this class, um, it kind of intro introduces you to several different team sports, and you just get to participate in those team sports. Not as vigorous or, or as, as um, physically um, active as the weight training class. Only one physical education course is allowed per semester. One thing you also need to know is that graduation requirements supersede weight training and team sports every single time. So what I mean by that is, is you're getting closer to graduation and you have to have certain classes in order to graduate. If you were to register for a weight training class, but you really need something else in order to be on time and on track for graduation, then that academic class is going to supersede that weight training course. The next few slides are going to step you through the process of actually registering for your classes. I'm not going to read through these. You can go back and access this on your own, slide by slide. You're also going to have this information on the registration document that's also posted on the website. So make sure that you view these slides or that step-by-step -step guide on the registration document so that you know exactly how to go in and register for your classes you need to make certain that this is done between February the 8th and February the 18th. I will say it again because those dates are very important. February the 8th is when our window opens for registration 
and it will be closed on the 18th. So make certain that you go in during that time in order to choose your classes. You also can access your transcript through the student portal. And on this slide here, it will show you how to access that. So if you can't quite remember the classes that you've taken in the past, you can always reference back to your actual transcript to see the things that you've already completed. We have one other thing that's a helpful tool for you to use when deciding what classes that you want to register for. Mr. Pierce? I'm happy to share with you again and speak about the youth science. Youth science is that interest and aptitude inventory that we want every student to take and every student who takes from your career uh, class has already taken this assessment. To access your test results, which will give you the careers that best fit your aptitude and interest and that will help you decide for, for your career pathway here at Ringwood High School, log into Parent Portal. Your username is your lunch number and your password, of course, is your first initial, last initial, and eight digit birthday. That will get you in to that screen. Go to the bottom and pick more. You can see it highlighted in yellow at the bottom of the screen. Click more and then look at the yellow highlight SLDS portal. Within that portal, it will bring you to several tabs. Click on my career plan. If you've taken new science, your results will be under my career plan. Also, when you register upperclassmen, you have taken the U Science and you have completed a portfolio which details your career plan and your graduation plan. So everything Dr. Edgman has laid out for you today, for upperclassmen, you already have that document on your Google site that you created in from here to career class if you took that class and it details the classes you need to take and what year, as well as your career classes or work-based learning or advanced classes, weight training, etc., that you mapped out. Remember, our goal here with a career plan is to make sure that you not only graduate, that you graduate with credentials of value and a plan for either four-year college, a technical school, the workforce, the military, or apprenticeship. You sites will help you make those decisions needed. Dr. Edgeworth. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Isn't that amazing that we have these resources for our students in their From Here to Career class, that they're developing their graduation plan, and then they, they, they build that based off of their interests and their abilities so that they can already be thinking ahead about their futures. It's amazing. So make sure that you use those tools because they are very valuable for you and they can help you absolutely as you are working through your registration for this year. So um, you'll be able to access, of course, this that you're viewing now as well as the other uh, registration documents on our website and we'll also put it on, um, we'll send that information out to Ringgold Middle School as well. Through the website, you'll be able to see the grade level registration forms with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do your online registration. You'll also see a list of course descriptions, and you'll also get dual enrollment information. So for those of you that are ju upcoming juniors and seniors that know for sure that you want to do dual enrollment, pay very close attention to those dual enrollment documents and very close attention to those due dates because we have to make certain that we have those classes built and that information to our partnering colleges so that we can be set up for next year. Here you have a list of all of the administrators um, in our building. Mr. J.R. Jones is our principal. I've introduced myself earlier. I'm Dr. Edgman. I'm over scheduling and registration. Mr. Pierce is over our CTAE and our work-based learning programs. And then we also have Dr. William Lanford, who is another assistant principal here. For other questions that you have related to registration, you can also access your counselor, okay? These are gonna be some of your best friends when it comes to building your schedules and working through and thinking through your plan for graduation. So this is based off of your last name. So students that have the last name A through F, your counselor is Joel Sabota. For students with last names G through M, 
Your counselor is John Trevelyan, and students with last name N through Z is Sharon Brown. Again, some important dates that you need to remember. February the 8th is when our portal opens up for registration. You will not be able to register before the 8th, and that window is going to close on the 18th. So if you don't go online and register for your classes on your own, and we're not able to get a hold of you when we contact you, then the counselors will go in and choose those classes for you based off of what you need for graduation. February the 24th, dual enrollment at RHS course request. That's a document that's on our website. For those of you that are interested in doing dual enrollment next year, you need to make sure to get that submitted by February the 24th. We have to have it by that time because GNTC has to have a, a certain headcount um, by a certain date. So make sure that you're getting that document in. If you, if you wait past that date, you're going to be unable to do dual enrollment. And I hate it. I want you to be able to do it if it's something that you really want to do. So that's why it's extremely important that you pay close attention to these due dates. May 1st, our GNTC dual enrollment application and registration deadline for register, registering for their classes um, is May the 1st. May the 21st is the last day to make any schedule change request through the portal. And then July the 1st is the Dalton application and registration deadline for fall enrollment. If you are a new student for dual enrollment, you must attend Dalton State or GNTC's student orientation. So make sure that you know that that is the expectation. I want to go back really quickly to one slide. This is going to help you tremendously. This is also the same thing that you're going to have on your registration document by grade level. This right here is going to be your best tool along with the students that have already created a graduation plan and they're from here to career class on choosing the classes that you need and want for next year. So pay close attention to the sequencing and if you have any questions, again, you can always reach out to your counselor or to myself. Um, we are so excited about having a new school year and we're excited to hopefully see all of the shining faces back on our campus and um, we're just looking forward and excited for a new, new, new fresh start in the new year. So uh, again, if you have questions, reach out to us and um, looking forward to a great reg open registration. Thank you.